It's no secret that PALs are key elements to upgrading your efficiency and production in PAL world, and knowing which ones to look for will get you there that much faster. So here are 12 plus of the most useful PALs to have in your ranks early on. Let's get into it. Our first pal on the list is Lambal. This sheep creature is probably one of the first pals you'll encounter when you begin your journey. They're quite easy to catch and make for a perfect first addition to your party. When assigned to your base, Lambals will help with building any new structures you're putting up, and the more of them you have, the faster it will go. You can also get one to help speed up production when crafting items at a workbench. They are also very useful as transporters, picking up any resources that are lying around on the ground and taking them into storage. And while none of these tasks are unique to them, and they may not be the fastest, it's not hard to hurdle a bunch more and really increase your efficiency. Their last use in production is to have them assigned to the ranch, where they will periodically drop wool, which you can use for crafting. Lastly, in combat, they have the ability to be used as meat shields, but I'll leave that moral decision for you to figure out. Second on the list is Kativa, another pal you'll encounter fairly early on. When assigned to your base, Kativas will also begin gathering any wood, stones, or berries in the vicinity. However, they are most notable for their ability as miners. If in the vicinity, they will automatically begin mining stone or palladium nodes. Pair this with a couple of lamb balls, and you've already got yourself a pretty efficient workforce. Kativas are also great for use as harvesters, as they will harvest any crops that are currently ready on farm plots. Lastly, they will also help with construction of new buildings and items at the workbench. Number 3, Gumas. As you'll come to know, planting and watering your berry plantation takes quite a long time, which is why the next two pals on this list are the perfect solution, starting with Gumas. This beautiful creature is the first pal you'll find around the world who has the ability to plant crops, bringing you one step closer to farming automation. Now production-wise, there's not much else Gumas really does around the base, besides eating like a complete disaster. But you may want to consider him as a part of your party when you go to battle the first boss, as his ground attacks can prove particularly effective. But I won't show that to prevent any spoilers. Next up, we have Pangolit, a pal who is extremely useful in both combat and around base. To start, Pangolit is the second piece of the puzzle in regards to the berry plantation, providing water to start the growing stage, which provides you and your pals with a virtually infinite amount of food. On top of this, Pangolit will also help construct buildings, craft items, and also transport resources into chests, and his quick movement speed makes him better than most for this particular task. In terms of combat, Pangolit's Ice Missile skill is incredibly useful, as it has the chance to freeze enemies, giving you and your pals time to land some extra hits. And from water, we transition to the element of fire with Fox Sparks. Not only does this pal look cool, but its fire element grants it the ability of kindling, which allows you to increase the speed at which you cook in the campfire. And although this is Fox Sparks only use at base, early game combat is where he really shines. Not only can his fire attacks inflict burn for passive damage, but if you've gotten to level 6 in the tech tree, you'll be able to unlock Fox Sparks Harness. Craft this at a PAL gear workbench and you'll be able to use his special ability. Just hold your interact key and Fox Sparks will come running into your arms, where you can use it as a handheld flamethrower and deal a massive amount of damage. Not to mention, the fire looks pretty cool too. Number 6 is Ekthir Deer. Now this pal is a bit harder to catch compared to the others I've shown so far, but it's well worth the trouble. If you're still a low level early on, try to get one that's separated from its pack, and lure it to your base where all your other pals can help you weaken it. And once you've caught it, you'll have your first lumbering pal, who will get you wood completely passively. Combine this with your mining kativas, and you should be able to build and craft without needing to do any farming of your own. Just bear in mind that this pal does like to eat, so you'll want to put some decent food in your feed box if you want to prevent it from getting depressed. Next up on the list is Vixie. When assigned to base, Vixie is well suited to harvest crops from the berry plantation, but her specialty lies in the ranch. When assigned to it, Vixie will periodically dig up random items. These items can include gold coins, arrows, and most notably, pal spheres. And I mean, you can get a lot from this. And her value doesn't stop there, as she is particularly useful in early game combat. Not only does she possess the same sandblast skill as Gumas and Fox Sparks, which is effective against the first boss, but her attack speed is also much faster, often doing combination attacks to deal a good amount of damage. Number 8 on the list is Daydream. Now, while not special in any way productivity-wise, if you've reached level 8, you'll be able to unlock Daydream's necklace in the tech tree. Craft this at the Pal Gear workbench, and so long as you have Daydream in your party, he will stay by your side at all times, and attack any enemies you have in combat. 
The big bonus here is that you can summon another pal at the same time, effectively having two pals out at once as you roam. Also, Daydream cannot be attacked while in this state. Number 9 is Rushor. These warlike pals are found a bit further out from spawn, commonly in or around this sandy area just across the way from the Rain Syndicate Tower. But although they're found over here, their levels are generally pretty low, making them a relatively easy catch. Just keep in mind that they are aggressive and will begin attacking if you come within range. Once you're at base, these guys are useful as miners, just like the Kativas. But their true power lies behind this level 6 unlock in the tech tree, which is the Rush or Saddle. Craft this at the Pal Gear workbench and you'll have your first mount, making traversal around the island much faster. Number 10 is Malpaca. Much like the Ekthir deer, these guys can be pretty tough to catch early on, so I'd recommend luring them into base, much like I did on my first day. But once you've caught one, you can assign it to a ranch and it will passively produce wool. On top of that, once you reach level 7, you can unlock the Melpaca saddle, giving you another option for a mount. But Melpaca is far better than Rushor in this regard, and here's why. Not only is its jump higher and its ride speed much faster, but its air cannon ability while riding practically locks onto targets that are nearby. On top of that, the ability's cooldown is extremely quick, making this pretty powerful, and a very viable way to farm XP for your party. Next up is Caprity. This pal can also be found near the Rush Road location, just across from the Rain Syndicate Tower. Now these guys can definitely be a bit harder to catch, and you might want to consider bringing a Megasphere as well. You can find these in chests lying around in these early Meadows locations. I'd recommend having a party of Fire-type pals such as Fox Sparks to weaken it, then just use your Megasphere to catch it. Once you've got it, this pal has multiple uses, both pertaining to food. When at the ranch, Caprity will slowly produce red berries, making it an alternative to the berry plantations that also takes less pals to run. But if you prefer the berry plantation method, Caprity also has a level 2 planting skill, planting berries at twice the speed that Gumas does. And as you would have found out trying to capture it, it's pretty good in combat too. Moving on to our bonus section, number 12 is Raid Camps. Now I know that's not the name of a pal, but early on in your journey you can come to this Raid Camp right next to the Rain Syndicate Tower. And once you clear it of the guards, you'll be free to unlock this cage in the middle, which holds a completely random pal that will be added to your team upon rescue. And you can do this multiple times to get multiple different pals, some of which can be extremely useful. Lastly, pal number 13 is a human. Yes, you can actually catch humans. So far, as I'm pretty early into the game, I've only managed to catch a Syndicate Thug and Gunner, which don't have any production capabilities apart from handiwork. But I thought I'd share anyway in case you wanted an extra buddy or two at base. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and consider subscribing. Leave a comment letting us know who your favorite early game pal is. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.